we're on a mission to explore the Holy House of Loretto, which, according to pious tradition, is the true house of the Virgin Mary, miraculously transported by angels to Italy. Is it truly from Nazareth? And could it possibly have been supernaturally moved? Or is there another, more plausible explanation? Join me as we explore Loretto. My name is Michael O'Neill. I'm the Miracle Hunter. I research and investigate the supernatural, traveling the world to take a deeper look at how miraculous events have had a transformative effect on world history, inspiring some of Catholicism's most famous devotions and most magnificent churches. From miraculous images of the Virgin Mary and the inexplicably incorruptible bodies of great saints, to the miracles of the Eucharist and those who bear the wounds of Christ, Journey with me around the globe to see the wonders that have inspired the fascination and faith of believers for centuries. fly into Rome, but we must travel on the ground three hours northeast to the coast on the Adriatic Sea, to the province of Ancona in the region of Marche, on the right bank of the Massone River, in order to reach the hill town and comune of Loreto. This charming hill town has a population of 10,000 within a quiet central Italian region. Its location seems divinely chosen and appropriate to honor Mary and her house. With the scenic Mount Conero, the Apinine Mountains, and the lovely hill towns in the background, visitors are graced with the beauty of God's creation in addition to the graces that are bestowed spiritually from Mary's house. At 450 feet above sea level, its position overlooking the Adriatic seems to confirm one of Mary's titles, the Star of the Sea. Loretto is famed throughout the world for being the site of the Holy House of the Virgin Mary of Nazareth, conserved within an elaborate Renaissance church. Boasting the title of minor pontifical basilica, it has been an important pilgrimage destination for nearly eight centuries. It is one of the most significant and visited Marian shrines in the entire Catholic world. Inside the basilica, conserved within its massive walls, is what is believed to be the Holy House of Nazareth, where Mary grew up and was visited by the Archangel Gabriel in the Annunciation. The House of Mary is composed of three walls of stacked stones and sits beneath an ornate basilica. The Litany of Laredo, which contains over 50 titles of the Virgin Mary, owes its origins to the Holy House of Laredo, formally approved in 1587 by Pope Sixtus V. It originated in the Middle Ages was recited or chanted in a group setting. As a visitor to the Holy House, I arrive at the harmonious Piazza Madonna, or Virgin Mary Square, before the Basilica. Designed during the Renaissance era, on one side is the Apostolic Palace, an extraterritorial Vatican property where Loreto's bishop resides. On the other side is the Palazzo Illirico, built as a guest house for pilgrims. The Basilica itself is one of the most important Gothic Renaissance monuments in Italy. It was built around the same time as the Basilica of St. Peter in Rome, and many of the same popes and architects involved in the construction of St. Peter's had a role in that of the Basilica of the Holy House. Construction began in the late 15th century, and it was finished two centuries later. The greatest artists and architects of the era were called to work on it, Giuliano de Sangallo, Francesco de Giorgio Martini, Donato Bramante, and Antonio de Sangallo the Younger. In front of the facade is a large marble statue of Pope Sixtus V. He rises high above the Sagrato with a tall mitre and his hand delivering a blessing. Born in a town not far away, 
Pope Sixtus was largely responsible for finishing construction on the Basilica and Square and rendering it the way it appears today. Fiercely devoted to the Holy House of Loretto, he made the following pronouncement on March 17, 1586. The Temple of Loretto contains the sacred room which was consecrated by the Divine Mysteries. Astute visitors will note that the Basilica is fortified in the upper part with a walkway and stone corbels. Known in Italian as the Caminamente de Ronda, these patrol walkways serve to strengthen the Basilica against frequent attacks by Turkish pirates and ships along the Italian peninsula. The Basilica of the Holy House of Loreto is the only church in Christendom fortified in such a way. In the center of the facade are three magnificent bronze doors, sculpted at the end of the 16th century and the beginning of the 17th century. They represent scenes from the Old Testament designed to spiritually guide the pilgrim in their journey toward the mystery of the Incarnation, which took place in the walls a short distance away. Inside the church are numerous side chapels, decorated between the 16th and 20th centuries. The artwork in each chapel was donated by the faithful of different countries. As such, they reflect the artistic style of each nation that sponsored them. Directly beneath the large cupola or dome is the Holy House of Mary. Externally, the house was decorated in marble bas-relief sculptures, depicting biblical scenes narrating the life of Mary. Interspersed are statues of women from the Old Testament. The artwork was designed by Donato Bramante in 1509 at the behest of Pope Julius II and executed by Andrea Sansovino, who worked on the sculptures from 1513 to 1527. He was succeeded by Raniero Nerucci and Antonio de Sangallo the Younger. The elegant marble wrapping was conceived as a precious reliquary. The scenes prepare the visitor for what is inside. Once inside, pilgrims have entered the Holy House, the inner sanctum of the entire complex. They can touch the original walls that made up part of Mary's house and where it is believed that the incarnation took place. The Latin phrase, hic verbum factum est, here the word was made flesh, stands out prominently. The Holy House itself consists of three walls about 10 feet high. Facing the altar, they are the walls to the right and left and rear. While the walls appear to be made of dark red-colored bricks, in fact, they are small carved stones. There are occasional plexiglass coverings installed to protect ancient graffiti markings on the stones, which were studied and helped to authenticate the walls as being from Nazareth. Directly above the altar is a statue known as the Black Madonna, covered with a jewel-encrusted mantle known as a Dalmatic. The statue is venerated and associated with the Virgin of Loretto throughout the world. The Dalmatic is removed once a year on Holy Saturday, and the faithful can process through the Holy House to observe the statue in its original form. It is sculpted from cedar of Lebanon wood and most likely blackened due to smoke from oil lamps, candles, and incense over the many years. Others say the artist intended it to be black. The actual statue was created in the 1920s. Centuries ago, there was not a statue in the niche above the altar, but a painting on a tavola or wooden board. According to tradition, it is believed that it was painted by St. Luke the Evangelist himself. Around the mid 1500s, the image was replaced by a statue made of fir wood. Some say it too was created by the hand of St. Luke. In 1921, a fire broke out inside the Holy House and destroyed the sculpture. At the behest of Pope Pius XI, a new statue was immediately sculpted. It was realized exactly like the one destroyed, though it was made from a cedar of Lebanon tree from the Vatican Gardens. The following year, the Pope himself crowned the statue in St. Peter's Basilica and had it solemnly transported to Loretto. Consequently, it is believed that the Black Madonna statue in the Holy House is close to the original true appearance. Another important relic within the Holy House is the Altar of the Apostles. Directly below the main altar is an ancient stone altar protected by two grates. It is believed that it was always in Mary's house and was brought to Loretto from Nazareth with the Holy House. According to tradition, this altar was used by St. Peter and the first local Christian community 
to celebrate the Eucharist in the house of Mary in Nazareth, hence the name Altar of the Apostles. When I think of Mary's house, an obvious question comes to mind. Why would it be in Italy and not in Nazareth in Galilee? In fact, in Nazareth, there is another important basilica, the Basilica of the Annunciation, built over a grotto. It is believed to be the site where Mary lived, was visited by the Archangel Gabriel, and gave her a fiat, her consent to conceive, bear a son, and name him Jesus. Mary's house in Loreto, more precisely the walls, were once attached to the grotto and brought to Loreto. In fact, the walls would fit perfectly in the space in front of the grotto. Thus, the grotto and walls formed a sort of two-room house. According to the most ancient tradition, the holy house was carried miraculously from Nazareth to Loreto by angels. The following is one of the most ancient accounts. The winds of war were blowing and the Saracens demolishing the Christian buildings and were preparing to destroy Mary's house as well. It was then that, on the night of May 12, 1291, some angels lifted it up and transported it to Dalmatia on the Adriatic coast between Tersat and Fiume, in a place called Raoniza. Woodcutters were amazed when they came upon the small dwelling. Soon, pilgrims began visiting the house. Later, the angels lifted the house up once again to transport it to Italy, near the port of Recanati in a forest where a pagan temple once stood. In the small forest, shepherds saw a dazzling light come out of the clouds and behind the light, the house. Today, there is a small church known as the Bandurola, which marks the spot. But the area was infested with dangerous bandits. So the house was transported again miraculously by angels to the lands of the Antici brothers in Reconati, who, however, did not know how to make themselves worthy of the grace that touched them so much so that they took possession of the pilgrims' offerings and quarreled amongst themselves to divide them. Thus, the angels returned another final time and carried the house, placing it on the public road between Reconati and the sea. It was placed there on the night between December 9th and 10th in the year 1294. The sacred chapel was the object of great care right from its arrival, and a strong wall was also erected to defend it from inclement weather and soil degradation. The hill where the house was finally placed, known as Monte Prodo, was covered by laurel trees. The name for laurel in Latin is Loretum, which gave the town its name, Loreto. As I look throughout the basilica, I see that the tradition of angels flying with the holy house is a frequent motif. There are numerous sculptures and bas-reliefs depicting the event. As Our Lady of Loreto is associated with the Flying House, she is the patroness of aviators and pilots. In fact, the year 2020 marked the 100th anniversary of the official proclamation of Our Lady of Loreto as the patroness of aviators. The story goes that in 1919, pilots returning home after World War I asked Pope Benedict XV for a patron. And on March 24, 1920, he assigned Our Lady of Loreto. In fact, a statuette of Our Lady of Loreto accompanied Charles Lindbergh on his first solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean, while a Loreto medallion was on board Apollo 9 on its trip. The traditional date of the arrival of the Holy House is an important feast in Loreto, known as the Translation of the Holy House, or more colloquially in Italian, La Venuta, the Coming. It is celebrated the night of December 9th when it is believed that the house arrived. The three days from the Feast of the Immaculate Conception are like a local triduum. To commemorate the event, the faithful gather in the square in front of the Basilica on December 9th. Late at night, a bonfire is lit, symbolizing a type of navigational beacon that guided the angels to Loreto that night in 1294. Throughout the region, Our Lady of Loreto is celebrated as a popular feast. On the night of December 9th, families and neighbors gather together to light bonfires and sing Marian hymns. Of course, not everyone believes that the Holy House was carried by angels from Nazareth to Loreto. In fact, a modern theory suggests that the Holy House 
like many relics from the Holy Land, were transported by ship at the end of the Crusades. This was not uncommon as many relics were brought back in that era, saving them from Muslim devastation as the Christian Crusaders abandoned the Holy Land. From Venice to Bari to El Malfi, Italian churches up and down the Adriatic Sea today possess numerous Crusader era relics. According to this modern theory, in the early 1900s, a papal archivist was going through the Vatican documents when he discovered a ledger detailing items that were brought out of the Holy Land in the late 13th century. He read that a noble Byzantine family named Angelos or De Angelos, descendants from the emperors of Constantinople, commissioned the relocation of the Holy House from Nazareth to Italy as part of a wedding dowry for his daughter, who was to marry Philip of Taranto in 1294. In Latin and Italian, the name Angelos is Angeli, which in English is angels. So adherents to this theory believe the quote-unquote angels brought the Holy House to Loretto after all. To lend support to this theory, two coins dating from 1287 to 1308 were discovered below the Holy House. They were from the era of Guido II de la Roche, Duke of the French fief of Athens, son of Elena Angelina Comnena, known as Elena Angelos, the niece of the benefactor who moved the house, according to the document. However, others are skeptical of this modern theory. The documents supposedly discovered by the priest archivist, despite numerous searches, have never been found or seen by anyone. The only record of it is an alleged ancient diplomatic codex, now kept in the state public library of the Abbey of Montevergine in southern Italy. Known as the Khalid Sanense Chartillarium, it is supposedly from the Constantinian Angelic Order, originating from the Church of Santa Sofia in Constantinople. The problem, however, is that this Chartularium exists only as a 19th century copy of three sheets. There is no original. Further, the family whose vaunted princely and Byzantine origins are fake, as well as is the aforementioned Constantinian order. Regardless of how the house arrived, there is little doubt that the walls were once attached to the grotto beneath the Basilica of the Annunciation in Nazareth. Here, in fact, science supports the ancient religious tradition that the walls are from Nazareth. Archaeology, architecture, engineering, and chemistry all point to the truth that the walls were once affixed to the grotto in Nazareth. First, the masonry and cut of the rocks are foreign to Italy but typical of construction in Palestine in the first century. Further, the measures of the three walls fit precisely within the foundations excavated in front of the grotto in Nazareth, and those of the fourth wall fit the grotto. Therefore, architecture points to the validity of the tradition. Next, the walls are composed of two types of limestone found in Nazareth, but not in Loretto or the Marques region. The same holds true for the Altar of the Apostles. Additionally, the mortar between the stones is typical for first century Palestine, but not for Italy. Here, chemistry too indicates that the stones are from the Holy Land. Perhaps most convincingly of all, graffiti markings on the walls were analyzed. Archaeologists discovered Christian symbols of the second and third centuries, similar to those that can be seen on the wall of the grotto in Nazareth. Here, archaeology demonstrates convincingly that the walls were once part of the Nazareth house. The house has no foundation and in some places does not even touch the ground. It was placed directly on dusty footing, not cleared at all. Beneath the walls, archaeologists discovered snail shells, acorns, and a dried walnut, and even the remains of a thorny bush. In 2012, because of the number and frequency of miracles reported at the Holy House, Two institutions similar to those of Lourdes were created in Loretto, the Medical Observatory and the Medical Commission. The intent was to follow the example of Lourdes, where formal bodies were established to verify the numerous healings that were reported. While miraculous phenomena are frequently reported in pilgrimage sanctuaries, the Church prefers caution and prudence when declaring whether or not a miracle truly took place. For this reason, commissions have been established at the Holy House of Loretto to analyze reported healings from a medical perspective and a religious perspective to judge whether it is inexplicable and miraculous. 
in Loretto, there have been miracles confirmed by the Medical Commission and the Church. Noteworthy cures have involved the complete recoveries of an 11-year-old boy in a coma, a 9-month-old baby boy on death's door with a serious case of bronchitis, and an elderly woman with a rare eye disease. Beyond officially approved miracles or scientific analyses, countless pilgrims feel something powerful at the Holy House. They feel the maternal presence of Mary. Though they may not receive an officially designated miracle, they are sure they have received a grace. Testifying to the graces received is a large room inside the basilica known as the Pomeranzio. It is filled with gifts and ex voto offerings. These were given over the centuries to the basilica by the faithful due to the devotion or out of gratitude for blessings received through the intercession of Our Lady of Loretto. Another example of the devotion of pilgrims to Our Lady of Loretto is the ancient tradition of circling the house on one's knees. In fact, over the centuries, pilgrims' knees have worn two tracks in the marble. I can't help but think that one of the major spiritual draws to the Holy House is the number of canonized persons who have visited the sanctuary over the centuries. Upon exiting the basilica, I can see a large plaque affixed to the wall listing over 100 saints and blesseds who came here between the 14th and 20th centuries. The list includes many popes. Just before opening the Second Vatican Council in 1962, Pope John XXIII made a pilgrimage to Loretto. This was the first time a pope ever took a train. Precisely 50 years later, in 2012, Pope Benedict XVI made a pilgrimage to Loretto to mark the anniversary of the council and to dedicate the year of faith to Our Lady of Loretto. Pope John Paul II was surely the most devoted pope to Our Lady of Loretto in modern times. He visited the sanctuary six times during his pontificate. He was instrumental in reestablishing a youth center in Loretto to aid young people in their discernment in choosing their own vocation. Pope Francis visited the Basilica in March 2019, where he signed the apostolic exhortation dedicated to young people. He prayed that, quote, so that the Virgin Mary's yes may be the yes of many of us. While here, Pope Francis decreed that the Feast of Our Lady of Loretto on December 10th be officially included in the Roman calendar as a memorial to be celebrated. With the decree, the Feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Loretto must appear in all calendars and liturgical books for the celebration of the Mass and Liturgy of the Hours. Most recently, Pope Francis added three new invocations to the Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, Mother of Hope, and Solace of Migrants. While many focus on the origins of the Holy House of Mary, whether or not the walls were from Nazareth or whether or not the grotto in Nazareth was identified correctly as Mary's home, others say this is not important. What is important, they say, are the miracles, graces, and conversions that have taken place here over the centuries. Now I must leave the simplicity of these sacred walls where Mary gave her consent. As related in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, May it be done to me according to thy word. As I say goodbye to this home, it encourages me that we too must strive to hear the voice of God, listen, and respond. May we too say yes to the Lord and do his will.